Um, but what I want to start with is a, a big development that we got today on a major story we've been covering for months now. This particular thing that just happened today is something that has been denied and denied and denied again by the entities in question. Uh, but now, months down the road, they've finally admitted to it, and that's potentially a big deal for the Robert Mueller investigation and for the congressional investigations into Trump and Russia. I think also it's personally going to be a big deal for some of the reporters who were right about this story in the first instance months ago. Reporters who have been staring down denial after denial after denial on the story for months who have now finally been proven right. We're going to speak with one of those reporters this evening. But it started in May of last year, May 2016. American intelligence agencies reportedly intercepted a communication that they didn't really know what to make sense of at the time, but it was a communication that they intercepted between two different Russian officials. Uh, there was a guy who worked at the GRU, Russian Military Intelligence, and last May he was overheard on this intelligence intercept bragging to one of his Russian colleagues that Hillary Clinton was about to get a big surprise courtesy of Vladimir Putin and Russian military intelligence. This was first reported by Massimo Calabresi at, at Time Magazine, and here's how he reported it in May 2016. Quote, in May 2016, sorry, this is Calabresi's report from May 2017, but he's reporting on something that happened in May 2016. Quote, in May 2016, a Russian military intelligence officer bragged to a colleague that his organization, the GRU, was getting ready to pay Clinton back for what President Vladimir Putin believed was an influence operation Clinton had run against him five years earlier when she was Secretary of State. The GRU, he said, was going to cause chaos in the upcoming U.S. election. So Massimo Calabresi was first to report that at Time magazine this year. This is the first we had heard about this particular intercept, which was apparently intercepted by U.S. intelligence last spring. Uh, McClatchy later confirmed Calabresi's reporting with multiple sources, uh, and McClatchy said that the specific type of chaos the GRU was promising for the U.S. presidential election was that they were going to, quote, spread news damaging to Hillary Clinton. So this reported U.S. intelligence intercept of this Russian conversation. This, again, was something that apparently happened in May of last year. So last spring, as the presidential primaries were winding down, Russian military intelligence bragging that they've got some secret plan to mess with U.S. public opinion, to mess with Americans' understanding of the news about Hillary Clinton and her run for the presidency. That discussion was captured in May of last year. And then, of course, we know about the things that happened soon thereafter. In June last year, there was that meeting involving the top echelons of the Trump campaign. Paul Manafort, the campaign chairman, and Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law, and Donald Trump Jr., all meeting with a whole bunch of Russians in Trump Tower, a meeting to discuss Russian government negative information about Hillary Clinton, according to the emails released by Donald Trump Jr. that purportedly set that meeting up. Now, one of the participants in that meeting as someone who we now know has given grand jury testimony to the Robert Mueller special counsel investigation. He's a Soviet-born D.C. resident who has Russian military intelligence connections, and he's reported to have been involved in multiple campaigns in the past where he worked for allies of Russian President Vladimir Putin, and those allies of Putin were involved in legal or business or financial disputes with other people. And those other people soon found themselves to be the victims of sophisticated hacking attacks where they had documents stolen from their computer servers and then publicized, or, or, or those documents were repurposed to hurt his client's opponents. So again, in May, Russian military intelligence is overheard talking about how they're going to spread negative information about Hillary Clinton. In June, this guy with a Russian military intelligence background is in Trump Tower, meeting with the top of the Trump campaign to s discuss negative information about Hillary Clinton. Then the following month, in July, DC Leaks and Guccifer 2.0 start, in fact, leaking and publicizing hacked negative information about Hillary Clinton stolen from the Democratic Party. The intelligence community later, quote, assessed with high confidence that Guccifer 2.0 and DCLeaks.com were both basically operations run by Russian military intelligence by GRU. By the fall, that Russian attack also included the tens of thousands of hacked documents that were stolen from the Clinton campaign staff and then released through WikiLeaks 
Again, that operation assessed by the U.S. intelligence community with high confidence to be a Russian op, to be a Russian military intelligence operation. Meanwhile, while all that's happening and all of those things are associated with Russian military intelligence, Meanwhile, beyond you know, stealing and leaking back into the U.S. these stolen democratic documents, Russia simultaneously, also through the summer and the fall, they ramped up their efforts to manipulate American news and in particular to manipulate online discussion and, um, and interpretation of the news by interrupting and steering and perverting social media traffic to hurt Hillary Clinton in the presidential election and help Donald Trump. And again, this is, this is something that the intelligence community made a positive declaration about in January of this year. This is not controversial stuff. This is basically settled and understood, at least if you believe this intelligence community report that came out in January. Russia's state-run propaganda machine, including its network of quasi-government trolls, contributed to the influence campaign to help Trump and hurt Clinton by serving as a platform for Kremlin messaging. So, I mean, here we are in September of 2017 now. We know about the timing, about how all of these things stacked up. We can put more dots on the map and more items on the timeline in terms of how all of these things connect and how they fall in order. But we've known really the basics of what the Russians did for about nine months now, right? Nine months since that Intelligence Committee report came out. On the social media part of what Russia did, though, there are have been some outstanding questions that have been aggressively reported on, but it's been pretty hard to get to the bottom of them. For one thing, how did Russian military intelligence or other elements of the Russian government, how did they do this stuff in American social media without us knowing at the time that that's who it was, without Americans being able to see bluntly that this was a foreign influence operation? I mean, if the Russian government, the Russian military were using American social media to try to influence the outcome of our election, that, of course, is a criminal matter, right? You can't spend foreign money on anything in an American election. So there's this question of how they did it. Um, it's a, there, there's also a, a technical legal matter for investigators to look into, into whether or not this was the uh, expenditure of foreign money to influence the outcome of an election. But there's also this broader counterintelligence question, this treason question about whether or not they had any help in launching that part of their attack. And this is the part where there are a few American reporters today who get to sort of stand up and pound their chests on this because they were right about this. In, in May of this year, in that Time Magazine article, where we first learned that the GRU had been overheard by US intelligence officials talking about how they were about to mess with Hillary Clinton in the election. Uh, Massimo Calabresi in that article was also first to report that intelligence officials were looking into Russia using Facebook to infiltrate the U.S. election. This was Calabresi in Time Magazine uh, back in May. Quote, intelligence officials have found that Moscow's agents bought ads on Facebook to target specific populations with propaganda. Now, that makes sense that Russia would do that, right? We understand they were op running this influence operation on Trump's behalf, right? They're running this influence operation to benefit Trump and hurt Clinton. We've understood that now for months. So it makes sense that they would use American social media. It does raise all sorts of interesting questions about whether or not they needed help to do it. So it would look like American stuff. So it would also target the right American Facebook users to have the maximum effect on the vote. It raises very interesting questions about Facebook accepting that money to influence the US election without noticing that it was from a foreign source. But Facebook came out and told Time Magazine in May uh, that it didn't happen. Uh, quote, a Facebook official says the company has no evidence of that occurring. So Calabresi says intelligence officials have found that Moscow's agents bought ads on Facebook to target specific populations with propaganda. Facebook comes out and says, no, the company has no evidence of that occurring. All right, well then in July, McClatchy reports that, quote, investigators at the House and Senate Intelligence Committees and the Justice Department are investigating whether the Trump campaign's digital operation overseen by Jared Kushner helped guide Russia's sophisticated vote targeting and fake news attacks on Hillary Clinton in 2016. They cite uh, several people familiar with the parallel inquiries. Uh, Peter Stone and Greg Gordon reported McClatchy that 
Congressional and Justice Department investigators are focusing on whether Trump's campaign pointed Russian cyber operatives to certain voting jurisdictions in key states. Areas where Trump's digital team and Republican operatives were spotting unexpected weakness in voter support for Hillary Clinton. Uh, and, and in that article, crucially, uh, McClatchy spoke with the guy who had just left his post as the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Russia at the Pentagon. So he's the senior Pentagon official responsible for Russia during the Russian attack on our election. And he told McClatchy in July, quote, there appears to have been significant cooperation between Russia's propaganda machine and individuals in the United States who were knowledgeable about where to target the disinformation. So. McClatchy comes up with that in July, specifically citing investigators' interest in how the Kremlin was able to target millions of voters' Facebook accounts, not just down to swing states, but even down to key precincts. Very, very pointed accusation there, right? And that elicits, once again, a spate of denials from Facebook. Facebook, uh, days after this McClatchy piece ran, uh, they told Wired.com that they had found no evidence of Russian entities buying ads during the election. Uh, then days later, it was CNN reporting that top Democrats on the Russia investigations, and Senator Mark Warner in particular on Senate Intel, they were convinced that Facebook holds the answers that investigators are looking for on the question of potential collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. CNN describes Senator Warner as convinced that Facebook can explain whether anyone from the Trump campaign helped Russians boost fake news articles on Facebook targeting Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton. After that comes out, the Trump campaign itself says, no, 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 that definitely didn't happen. The head of data operations who worked with Jared Kushner on the campaign comes out and says he was unaware of any Russian activity during the election at all. And then once again, Facebook itself comes out and says, no, no, no. This didn't happen. Facebook told CNN, quote, we have seen no evidence that Russian actors bought ads on Facebook in connection with the election. So right, this, would, this would appear to be a key part of what Russia did to try to skew the election toward Donald Trump. Right, this behavior by the Russians using American social media, specifically using Facebook, it's a key component of the investigation into whether or not they had any American help in what they did, whether any Americans knew what they were doing and you know, let it go or cheered them on or even helped them do it. And for months now, really good reporters at outlets all over the country have been chasing this down. And the big hurdle in the middle of all this investigative reporting is that Facebook keeps saying, no, 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 no. We know you think this happened. This didn't happen. Russians were Russians. There were no Russians. For months, Facebook has denied this ever happened. Now, as of today, Facebook admits, okay, there were Russians. Today at 4 p.m. Eastern time, Facebook released this <laughs> kind of ungoogleable blog post with the headline that I'm currently forgetting even as I'm reading it to you out loud. <laughs> An update on information operations on Facebook. <laughs> despite, despite that thrilling headline, what this means is that Facebook is now admitting, despite all its earlier repeated insistent denials, that in fact it has now positively identified thousands of ads during the presidential campaign as having originated in Russia. So that goes out at, at 4 p.m. Uh, and then uh, Carol Lenig and Tom Hamburger and Rosalind Helderman at the Washington Post, they were first to scoop on the story um, beyond the, frankly, anodyne, self-congratulatory statement by Facebook in which they basically intimate that the biggest threat here is to their own Facebook business policies that weren't followed. Kel or Rur. Uh, after that statement from, from Facebook, uh, Carol Lenning and her colleagues at the Washington Post were actually able to get this much more helpful information from a Facebook official for their story. Quote, there is evidence that some of the accounts that Facebook now admits to, some of the accounts are linked to a troll farm in St. Petersburg, one that is referred to as the Internet Research Agency. So, I mean, again, the bottom line here is what this means now is that Facebook is finally confirming, after months of denying it, that Russian fake accounts were shunting political messaging into the U.S. election for months. 
And although they don't say it in their blog post, um, an official does admit to reporters working on this story now that some of those Russian posts were tied to something called the Internet Research Agency. And even though that sounds very generic, that is a specific and Googleable thing. The Internet Research Agency is cited in the intelligence community's report on the Russian attack on our election. It's a, they cite it essentially as a project of Russian military intelligence. This is from page four of the intelligence community's report. Russia used trolls as part of its influence efforts to denigrate Secretary Clinton. This effort amplified stories on scandals about Secretary Clinton. Who were those trolls exactly? Again, from the intelligence community report, quote, the likely financier of the so-called internet research agency of professional trolls located in St. Petersburg. The financier of that is a close Putin ally with ties to Russian intelligence. So, Russian intelligence, again. It's like, it's, sometimes, some of these nights you feel like you connect the dots, sometimes you feel like, oh, it's one big dot. <laughs> Russian intelligence officers overheard discussing their plans to disseminate negative news about Hillary Clinton last May. Guy with Russian military intelligence background turns up in Trump Tower last June. Russian intelligence cutouts start distributing stolen hacked Democratic documents denigrating Hillary Clinton in July. Russian intelligence uses WikiLeaks to distribute stolen hacked documents denigrating Hillary Clinton in the fall. And all along for months, Russian intelligence is using American social media companies, including Facebook. Facebook now finally admits to circulate information intended to influence the election. It's like, it's like 17 different dots that are all labeled Russian intelligence, Russian intelligence, Russian intelligence. So this is a key part of the collusion narrative that was denied for months by this gigantic, powerful company. Now that Facebook is no longer denying it, now that everybody involved, except the Trump campaign, I think, admits to exactly what Russia did here, can we now look at what they did to see if they had help? If the, if the Republican-led congressional investigations aren't looking into that now, they should have to explain why they're not. Because now there's really no more disagreement about what happened here. The only question is whether there were American Confederates involved. And it's now a very investigatable thing. The other reason this is important is for a very pedestrian and direct reason, which is that, as I mentioned, you can't spend foreign money to influence a U.S. election, even just on Facebook ads. And so this is evidence now, direct evidence confirmed by Facebook of a discreet, clear crime committed in the course of the Russian attack on our election. Now, good luck bringing in the Russian military intelligence service into court to face the music for that particular crime, I know. But it's a crime, clearly. And if any American knew that crime was happening, if any American was part of the effort to make that happen, that American could absolutely be criminally charged on that matter. So this all finally gets confirmed today. When the Mueller investigation is actually under strange new kind of pressure from Camp Trump, um, a Republican congressman who was a member of the Trump transition and an early Trump supporter, Congressman Devin Nunes of California, he appears to have now basically unrecused himself from the Russia investigation he has started unilaterally threatening the FBI and the Justice Department with subpoenas and potential contempt charges if they don't hand over to him information on the Mueller investigation. Nunes has been the White House's best friend in trying to divert and fend off the Russia investigation from the very beginning of this scandal. It'll be interesting to find out, and we eventually will, it'll be interesting to find out whether or not Devin Nunes is freelancing this latest effort to try to interfere with the investigation, or if he is working directly with the White House on this again. But he has brought a new form of pressure to bear on the Mueller investigation, and we don't really know how that is going to turn out. The investigation itself proceeds, though, and... Today really is vindication for all the reporters who've been saying for all these months that the Mueller investigation has one very specific criminal matter to follow up on here because of this evidence of Russian money flowing through Facebook in an effort to influence the U.S. election. Reporters have been aggressively following that line of inquiry for months. The company at the center of those allegations has been denying it insistently for months. Today they finally stopped denying it. One more piece of this just got proven true. Watch this space.
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.